Stage lights flashing, this feeling smashing. My heart and soul belong to you. Here now singing, all bells are ringing. My dream has finally come true. This is my time to be a star. Wow. <laughs> Welcome back once again. It is time for just some uh, some anime love. It's uh, welcome back to the show. Reverend Sully, Eric or Sullivan ordained on the internet half a lifetime ago on uh, internet ordination. So it's fine and suitable to preach to the choir out here on the YouTubes. Pull up a chair, grab a cup of whatever it is you're shoving under your nose today, pal. We're talking Robotech. One of my all time favorite cartoons. Now, um, I was on the tweets or the zeets, however you want to call it. Um, one of my online buddies, the amazing, spectacular, often duplicated, never reproduced Jesse Blaze Snyder, uh, asked a great question. Name your five all time greatest animated movies. And I chose three anime. I chose, and, uh, I, well, uh, no particular order, Ratatouille by Pixar, uh, Batman, the, um, the Mask of the Phantasm, Akira, of course, Grave of the Fireflies, another anime, um, these last three are anime, and, and a personal choice, Macross, Do You Remember Love, 1984. This is as close to a um, a home version. I'm going to get to this for a while. I'm hoping that with the new... Um, the, there are new production deals that Macross is now going to be available in the United States due to some, you know, you know 40-year-old contracts and agreements. What is Macross? Macross is a 1982 anime. Um, it's 36 episodes, so they're about a half an hour each, you know, almost a half an hour each. Let's just round it up to a half an hour, okay? So that would be 13 hours of show. It ran from October 3rd, 1982 to June 26th of 1983, originally in Japan, about the super dimensional fortress Macross. It's, uh, begin this tale with an alien ship coming out of hyperspace, crashing into the planet Earth, disrupting an international war and ceasing it. That every it, it bound the world together and then the world came together and uh, found this alien artifact and retrofit it and mined it for its the potential of its technology where it's pushing us into a new age of technology, of robo-technology, one could say. And um, and the secrets involved behind that. Now, this was a huge, hugely popular show, especially when it comes to its toys. And then comes this in 1984. Macross, do you remember love? And I like to refer to it as Macross, Do You Remember Love 1984? Because that's when it was released. It was released in Japan, July 21st, 1984. So in a year, it took the completion of the show to its full feature movie release of 115 minutes, almost two hours. So we've taken this 13 hours of story and adapted it and condensed it into a movie form. Now this is a this is like a Japanese a Japanese anime thing. I've seen it so many times. So, Yamato, which is also Star Blazers. Hello, da 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 da. da. And um, Evangelion, not Evangelion. I'm sorry. Um, a Vision of Escaflone, another 26 episode, 13 hour long 
anime show condensed into and adapted into a two-hour story. So what do you keep? What do you what do you lose? How do you adapt this? The animation style in this is impressive and incredible. I love it. And there are liberties taken with the storyline that it, you had to condense 13 hours of story into a two hour form. And I, I love this one. I, so I know that this isn't on everyone's list of being the top five animated movies of all time. For me, it is. The animation style in this is so leagues above the television anime. I mean, uh, this is what I found out on the tubes, and I've got it sped up to uh, 1.25 um, normal uh, because you know that, that's a, a trick. So we don't hopefully get a uh, we don't get a copyright strike. That's why I have the uh, the sound off too. I've noticed in doing Gundam videos that I would get copyright flags, not copyright strikes, but copyright flags. And I think it had more to do with the music playing. So I figure that one out. Hit mute and go on with it. And a trick I learned from Critical Drinker is uh, if you're going to, you know, speed it up or reverse it. Now look at that. See? Look at this anime. I mean, this is Skull Squadron. Now in the TV show, Skull Squadron did not have, you know, Max Max's VF1A did not have a skull. In the, you know, it had the same blue color. And, um, but it wasn't, and here's Roy Fokers, Skull One, the Skull Leader. And notice that it's, at the, they call the armor the Fast Pack armor. You know, the two, the twin boosters and the, uh, and, and the, the forearm and, and Greaves. And, um, but Roy Fokers, Skull Leader, Skull One, has a unique, configuration it, it has a dual barrel particle cannon instead of a second booster well it has it has a booster on it but it just it's tricked out it's it's the it's the leader version and i just i rem remember in the 80s when this came out so here's rick hunter now rick hunter see the the, the single cannon on the head that's a vf1a a valkyrie flight fighter or aka the veritech and notice he's got a skull on his, you know, on the uh, the canopy cover as well. Now, this will evolve into the VF-1J of his and Max's as well, where you have the triangular, you know, viewpoint on, on the on the head and a, and a dual cannon. And he keeps the red and the black in the skull. And so there is a distinct movie version of... The, the, these these Valkyries uh, of the heroes Valkyries or Veritex as you know they are also called they were called Valkyries in Japan see I'm a huge fan I see uh, Max and Miria I always wanted to make a Max and Miria shelf it's one of my favorite love stories in all of fiction um, it's a it's a variable fighter it transforms from a, uh, a fighter mode into something called Jerwalk, or otherwise known as Guardian mode in, in the English version, and then into uh, a, a Batroid mode, or what we call a Battaloid mode. And part of that was because the Zentrani and the Melotroni are so big, so tall, they're giants! So you had to make an in-scale giant fighter. Isn't that cool? <laughs> now, I know Macross through the Americanized version. When I was 12 years old in 1985, um, Robotech premiered. And Robotech was an interesting thing. It was... Um, it was on... I remember it being on Channel 66... On the UHF dial of my local Boston television show uh, stations, the they would play second run show like movies, like old movies, 
syndicated TV shows and cartoons, especially in that precious after school time slot of say 2.30 to 5 or even 2.30 to 4.30. I mean, about 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, that's when the, you know, the talk shows came on. And then 6 o'clock was for the grown-ups. That's when the news came on, traditionally, in the old-fashioned 20th century broadcast television model. It's a lot different now with streaming and a la carte. In 1985, though... I remember it was one of, I remember going to summer camp. I was 12 years old. It was the height of something called New Wave, which was fashion and music. Uh, break, the breakdancing craze was the year before, and it was still going strong. And I was huge into, into what we would come to know as anime. <clears throat> He was kind of known also by Japanimation as well. It's, it's a, that's an antediluvian term, not, not used much anymore. But in the 70s, when I was a small child, I had Star Blazers, or the Space Battleship Yamato, as it was in Japan. We had something called Battle of the Planets, which was known as Gacha Man in, um, in Japan. We had something called Jim Terry's Force 5, which were five different anime shows. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday after school. And, you know, on Mondays you had Dan Gardace. Tuesdays you had the Getter Robos, as known as the Star Avengers. On Wednesdays you had the Space Kateers. Thursdays you had UFO Grandizer. And on Fridays you had Guy King. And we also had, you know, there, there, there was Speed Racer and, um, and Gigantor. Also, that was, and those were in the periphery. I knew Speed Racer a lot more than I knew Gigantor. And after school and Saturday morning cartoons were a big part of a child's life growing up in the 70s and 80s. So in 1985, I'm 12 years old, and in my life, I'm already primed. My mind is a, my soul is a fertile place for Japanimation, for anime, between ninja movies and samurai movies and Star Blazers, and Battle of the Planets, and Force 5. You know, I'm a, I'm a little otaku by then. We didn't have that word back then, but we do now. It was a little, you know, shonen otaku, huh? <laughs> exactly. So, into my life comes Robotech. 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 Blessed and grateful that these were released. So, with see, these are the new releases that are coming out very recently on Blu-ray, and there's a new di distribution method that the Macross movies and other series will be released. Hopefully, soon enough, sooner than later, and it will be sooner than later. We just have to wait for it. Uh, but Robotech was an interesting thing. Robotech is uh, three unrelated series. Macross, Super Dimensional Fortress Macross. Super, I think this was called Super Dimensional Fortress Southern Cross, which had nothing to do with Macross. And let me just, yeah, it's called. It was called Super Dimension Cavalry Southern Cross, and that was from 1984. So remember, Macross SDF Mac Macross came out in '82 to 83. Southern Cross came out from about, it was finished in 84. And then you had Genesis Climber Mospita from 1983. Southern, Southern Cross. And you guessed it, I'm reading this from the wiki. As I like to say, wiki. Uh, the original run of uh, Southern Cross was from eight, April of 1984 to September of 84, 23 episodes. Genesis Climber Mospita ran from October of 83 to March of 1984 and had 25 episodes. Robotech, though, was an ingenious creation of an American producer who bought the rights. Carl Masick. He was one of the pioneers of the anime industry in the United States in the early 80s. Um... He got the he got the uh, the rights to Macross, 
to Macross, Southern Cross, and Mospita. And what they did was they, they, they edited them together into a three generation long series united by an overstory. So all they did was rewrite the story to make it fit together. And you're, there, there are no, you know, so in, in, in the second part, there, you don't see any mecha or spaceships from this. It's only in the dialogue that this person here, Dana Sterling, is the, the daughter of the ace of the, of, of the fleet, Max Sterling, and his Zentrani wife, Miria. And and then, same thing with Genesis Climber Mospita. That became the third season. So you basically had like three seasons of Robotech well, in the one show, though, and had eighty-five episodes in total, and uh, they were about twenty-five minutes each. Yeah. So, I fell in love with this show. This show is so good. It was, it had one of the first occurrences of a main character's death. Namely, Roy Foker, right here. Roy is in love with Claudia, Claudia Grant. And that's Lisa, and, and the blonde lady there is Lisa Hayes. He ends up being the love of Rick Hunter's life, our main titular hero. Roy is uh, the, um, like the the older stepbrother to Rick Hunter, and um, and his and his his death was just it was visceral. I mean, we're twelve years old, and we're like, oh my gosh, Rick Hunter's dead. I mean, uh, I mean, sorry, sorry, Roy Foker has been killed. You know, he was the coolest guy. He had a guitar. He had a beautiful girlfriend. You know that, like, you know, he, and and then, but that's where Rick or Ichijo, in, in the Japanese, is given the opportunity to grow up and to step up, and then he becomes the pilot of Skull One and the leader of Skull Squadron, and. Then comes this into my life. I watched this in the late 80s in high school. I was about a freshman or a sophomore in high school. I think it was about 1989. I remember it clearly. We were hanging out in East Boston at my buddy Scotty's place. Um, it was, you know, the usual weekend sleepover. You know, the, the four of us would be like, you know, hanging out in Scotty's parents' basement. And um, we went to the Blockbuster video, and I saw this on the shelf, and it was it was called Attack of the Bionoids. Yeah, where did it go? <laughs> um, it's on here on the wiki page. On the wiki page, let's let's look for it. <laughs> Dude, okay, here we go. International versions of Macross, do you remember Love 1984? In the late 1980s, Celebrity Home Entertainment's Just for Kids label renamed this, uh, um, do you remember Love? Clash of the Bionoids. And that's how I remember it. The ending was modified from the Japanese version. In the scene where Hikaru calling the Macross after um, the explosion was removed, giving the false impression that Hikaru uh, Ichijo dies. Really, and um, and later a subtitled version was briefly released before being suppressed due to the ongoing legal battles between Big West, Studio Nui, Tatsunoko, and Harmony Gold. And that is what has been holding up Macross in the U.S. And that recently got ironed out that we can now, in this age of streaming, in the age of... Of, of of Blu-ray that we can have all this at home. I looked it up on Amazon. There's an uh, there's a Japanese Blu-ray that would play on my players, um, but it's got no subtitles and it goes for almost forty dollars. 
And that would be the closest thing I could get to having a home version of Macross Do You Remember Love 84. And um, I just, but I love the differences in the adaptation. Now, being a fan, a fandom fan, a fan of Star Wars, a fan of DC, Marvel Comics, um, there's always been some 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 hesitation and, and, and reticence to adaptation about respecting the lore and adhering to the previously published or released material and a disrespect in the adaptation, especially when changes are made. But this is this is Japanese. This is this is totally oh isn't this cool? You got Ben Dixon, Max, and Roy. This is the, this that's the big group of Skull Squadron. I love the design the chain I love the skull patch and uh yeah i just i love the differences in this case i say viva la difference and the adaptations worked i mean how hard it is to condense 13 hours of story into a two hour movie and just oh the yeah i mean the the art style in this is just so much so much better and just why is this one of my top five all-time animated movies? Well, it was made in 1984. I'm basically 11 years old in 1984. My birthday's in November. Very close to the end of the year, right? This was in the middle, as I said, of New Wave, of the New Romantics of the early 80s. It was about fashion, style, music, culture. And this movie is an unintentionally awesome 80s movie. It is so new wave. It is so new romantic. And it's not, it's not the original music that Lynn min May sings. Um, it's about its look. It's about its feel. And about the futurist ideals that... Like, this is the, our imagination of a future life, of what life will be in 1999 and 2008. <laughs> and this, the 80s had this wonderful feel of embracing the future, uh, when it, especially when it came to culture and fashion and music. And, uh, so, you know, seeing, like, people in makeup, you know, different people wearing makeups and outrageous clothes i mean we've been there we've done that 40 years ago it's <laughs> so it's for for me it's like uh sure and um look at that isn't that nice <laughs> claudia and roy are trying to set up lisa and rick <laughs> and they are fated to be together i mean so rick is in a romance with lynn min may um the the most popular pop star on, and Macross. But what happened there? Macross, uh, you know, was, uh, an island was built around this alien, this crashed alien spaceship that supported this, the, this, the families and, and, and people that supported the, you know, retrofitting of this alien artifact. An entire city was built around it. And then when the, the engine was activated, the aliens said, hey, we found our lost ship. There's the signal. So the aliens came by to destroy the ship that they, 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 they failed in destroying that first time. And calamity ensues. They engage the warp engine. The entire the warp bubble transported them beyond the, the uh, I believe it was the orbit of Pluto. And um, it was going to be a long journey back because they didn't trust turning the engines on again. That would only bring the aliens back. And they'd give up their position. So they had to travel subluminal under the speed of light from all the way from Pluto. It's going to take years to do that. Yeah. And then you had all these survivors, this whole city that got transported. So you had these amazingly, it was this huge, huge, huge ship, the SDF 1, the Super Dimensional Fortress Macross. So. They rescued the citizens and, the, and their infrastructure, and they made inside the ship Macross City, where the citizens could live. But 
on the way home, they're confronted by the aliens at every turn, of course. And so the, the, the citizens have to deal with constant threat. And then, and, and, um, and it's really interesting. I, I just, it's, it's, it's very, very Japanese. Life during wartime and its impact on the civilian. It's, it, yeah. But the reimagination of Macross City, the, the detail in this, it, it just, it's leagues ahead of the production quality of the TV show. It, it's, it's, I, I just think this stands out and stands up in this modern age. Lack of CGI. There's no CGI in this. There's no computer animated, computer aided anything here. This is, these are hand drawn cells. This is, this is great. I, I just, I, and this is one of my all time favorite animated movies because it really represents a huge part of my of nostalgia and of my childhood favorites that has lasted all the way until my adulthood here it's been 40 years since this came out <clears throat> well 35 years for the uh, show here see those boosters on that on, on on this search craft we didn't have that in the tv show those are like, you know, non-combat boosters. He's taking a, uh, a trainer ship out. He wants to impress his girlfriend. Um, he, he's, Rick is one of the best pilots in the fleet. Only Roy Foker and Max are better. And Max is the ace of Skull Squadron. He really is. I mean, there is a pecking order, and it goes Max, Roy, Rick. Those are the aces, but who is Top Gun? It's Max Sterling, or Maximilian Jenny Genius. That's who he is in the Japanese version of Macross. Now, here is where the plot thickens. We go into Act 2, because this is a real movie. There's three acts. Seriously, it's a three-act structure. We're going into Act 2. The, the stakes are about to change. What happens is, on Rick's joyride, the Zentrani here, that's it's Britai, our friend, our old friend Britai, and um, and Exodor, his, his major domo, and um, they even made a, 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 a Zentrani language for them as well, huh? But here's Rick on a joyride. I'm gonna just speed this up a little bit. And then Lisa comes out to say, hey, what are you doing out here? And Lisa brings Lynn Kyle, who is Min May's manager and cousin. And then Roy Foker comes out in his Skull One. You know, his, 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 and what happens is they all get captured. There he is. See? See that booster pod? He's, he's got the double gun booster pod. I've been... I'm looking for a model of that. See that? Oh, look at that. And so they all get captured. And on their way out to get captured... Uh, you know, on their breakout scene, Roy gets killed. We're just gonna... See? And what, what, what upsets the Zentrani is human intimacy. They have, they, they live in a separate society from their women and they clone and they have, so what is, what is one of the big things in here is culture and of love, the power of culture and the power of love. And it, it's, it's this wonderful theme with the movie, but we're going to have this bust out in just a second here. See, what happens is the, the Melatroni, that's Miria, that's Miria. The Melatroni are, um, are the enemies of the Zentroni. And it's a really interesting skew on like boys versus girls all this time in our, in, in our gender war and in our culture war. 
So our heroes take the opportunity to escape while the Melotroni. Oh, see her red? See that? That's her iconic red quadrillion rune <laughs> battle suit. So what happens here? This is the death of Roy Foker. And it's different in the movie here. And um, and this is why, at the end of the movie, Rick is the, the leader of Skull Squadron. And he now has the VF-1S. So we've seen in each act, the head of his ship has changed from the VF-1S with the single cannon to the VF-1J the tri uh, with the triangular viewpoint the two cannons looking like that see this is Miria's red Valkyrie she kept her and remember Max hit as a blue Valkyrie and so by the end of the movie Rick is skull leader and he's got the VF1S with the four the quad cannon and the cyclop and and, and, and the uh, the thin viewpoint the the, the 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 thin eye piece and he's got the double cannon pod because he is now skull squadron's leader and there's one thing i never noticed about this movie until the last time i watched it was um this is here's the, this attack here where it's um The Maltrani have found Earth. They've hit the SDF-1. The fighters are defending. See, here's Rick. And Max right now is the leader of Skull Squadron. And he peels off to get into a dogfight with Miria. Okay, see this right here? And this is an adaptation of their love story. And in the in the in the series, Max beats Miria in a dogfight. She micronizes, becomes a sleeper and becomes a, a an embedded agent in, 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 in the city of Micross to try to find Max. Finds him, tries to kill him, and they fall in love. And it's one of my favorite love stories in all of fiction. I don't know why. It just is. But they the Malatrani have just Warped away because the Zentrani have shown up. Max is trapped on that ship. I thought that they died together. But no. It was a blink and you miss it. If you're a Max and Miria fan, then hopefully you too can enjoy the... At this final battle at the end, the Zentron, some of the Zentrani, a Britai's fleet, sides with the SDF-1, and then the Melotroni show up and team up with their bitter rivals the uh, the, the Zentrani to defeat Bodolsa the megalomaniac leader of the Zentrani who wants to kill everybody but we see Max and Miria together Max is now it's been not is in the in the original show Miria was micronized and stayed that way in order to, um, in order to stay with Max, in this adaptation, this liberal adaptation, Max is macronized and becomes a giant to stay with Miria. And so instead of Miria staying with Max in the Micronian culture, Max stays with Miria in the Malatrani culture. And we will see that the Max gets his own blue Quadrilleon Rao power suit. And he's fighting next to his the love of his life, Miria, in her distinctive iconic red Quadrilleon Rao power suit. It is one of... And just, I love this movie. Its themes, its adaptation, its animation style, um, and, and the, the hard-to-find toys that went with it 
And it just, I, this is one of the loves of my life. So why is this one of my top 10 all-time favorite animated movies? Well, I just spent the last hour, half an hour raving about it. And why? It's got great animation. It's got a great story. And, um, and it keeps all the charm and, and the story beats of the original, in a way. Min Mei is given the, the lyrics of an ancient song that's going to be the secret weapon that disrupts the enemy using the power of love and the suggestion of intimacy and to remember how and who and where we came from. We came from two, two genders that mingled in, 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 in... Oh! Yeah, see? She's trying to snap out of it. It's not about abusing women. It's a more of like, she's freaking out. I can't do this. I can't do this. And yeah, it's pretty tough this day and age. It did That part didn't age well, of course. But when Minway now finds the wherewithal to do her duty and do her part for the war, I want to get to that Max and Maria scene. Here it is. And here comes the reveal of Rick's Skull One in his distinctive colors of black and red. But now with the VF-1S head, with the quad laser, and the double-barreled gun pod. Ah, oh, boy. I love this movie. There. Max and Miria. There's Max. And they fixed his... He doesn't have to wear glasses anymore. They, they, they fixed his vision. <laughs> but he had the red pod. And she's at the red pod, and he's at the blue pod. I just... I missed that story beat for, for years. I feel so rewarded as a fan of this. This is great. I mean, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you so very much. So, Macross, Do You Remember Love, 1984. One day, my dreams will come true. And I can own this at home and have my own copy. This is just a version I'm, I'm pirating off the great internet. And, um, oh gosh, this just, this gives me goosebumps. Can you see the goosebumps on my arm? Just still? No? Can you? No, probably not. Thank you so very much for tuning in today. God bless. Namaste. Good luck. Let's see Rick blow this thing up. See? The double barrel, you see the double barrel, uh, you know, gun pod? There it is. He's, he's letting loose with all the cannons. All of his might. All of his missiles. And he's taking out Bodolsa. The evil Wizard of Oz behind his curtain. And he's going to blow up his ship. Now this is where he said, due to an edit in the the original version, I thought that Hikaruichi Joe, Rick Hunter, sacrifices his life in this. Because it's very Japanese. Over at one of the Space Yamato movies, that's exactly what Wildstar does in the Comet Empire movie is that he, he has Nova, who's dead, in his arms, and he's evacuated the ship, and he flies the Argo, the, the Yamato, into the Comet Empire ship on a kamikaze run. And I thought that was very Japanese, very culturally Japanese, and the things that separate Japanese animation and culture and storytelling away from American storytelling and here we have, at the end, he, Rick Hunter survives, and he goes home to be with Lisa. Isn't that nice? I love romance in these stories. There's room for that. I love the melodrama between the love triangle. I, I you know, and that was kept. And this has just been some love and a reason why why would you choose an obscure japanese anime that practically no one's heard of as a top five all-time animated movie i give to you macross do you remember love 1984 quintessentially 80s quintessentially anime happy ending look the bridge crew survives captain global and, and, and Kimmy and, 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 and the Bridge Girls and, and, and Claudia, they survive. 
Well, they survived that big attack anyway. They Their demises don't come until the uh, Chiron's Revenge, which is a couple of years later. I know, huh? Thank you so very much for tuning in for my anime love. This has been the reason why Macross Do You Remember Love 1984 is one of my all-time top five favorite animated movies. Gosh, this has been fun to watch again. Thank you so very much for sharing this with me. Hey, hit that like button if you like this. Uh, hit subscribe. I would love to be part of your YouTube day. Um, hit those notifications. And, and Oh, I love the ending. This is the ending. And it's good. This is Denouement. Denouement is a, cinegraphic, a cinematic device where um, it gives the audience time to breathe and accept the, the cinematic closure. This is the end of the movie, the end of the story. And look, this this moment between Min Mei and her rival, Lisa Hayes. And this song that saved us all. Ah, gosh. And this. And so the music was a huge part of this. Let's just. This is the end. And it's just. It, it kind of. It, it's weird because it's just her tapping her foot, waiting for the band to kick in. And that's it. I mean, this is Denome. This is the opportunity to recollect yourself. And the light is dimmed. And our story is told. And that's what makes this that what makes this a good movie, because it pays. It, it it's got three acts. It, and it pays attention to the rules of cinema. It just it's a it is a movie. That's that. Thank you so very much for tuning in. God bless. Namaste. Good luck, and we will see you again. Cheers.